At the dawn of humanity, less than 75,000 years ago, a massive caldera erupted on the Indonesian island of Sumatra, triggering a prolonged and devastating volcanic winter. How did our ancestors survive this apocalypse? The explosion of the Toba supervolcano was Earth's largest volcanic eruption in the past 28 million years. Parts of Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Indian Ocean were covered by six inches of volcanic debris. An estimated 1,700 cubic miles of rock were detonated, forming a huge crater lake visible from space. According to the Toba catastrophe theory, modern human evolution was affected by the large volcanic event. Within the last three to five million years, after human and other ape lineages diverged from the early hominids, the human line produced a variety of human species. The massive volcanic eruption changed the course of human history, by severely reducing the human population, according to the theory. This occurred when the Toba caldera underwent a Category 8 explosion on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, known as a megacolossal eruption. This may have reduced the average global temperature for several years and may possibly have triggered an ice age. This massive environmental change is believed to have created population bottlenecks in the various species that existed at the time, which in turn accelerated differentiation of the isolated human populations, eventually leading to the extinction of all the other human species, except for the branch of modern humans. But stone tools and human teeth hint that the human population weathered the biggest eruption in two million years. The event was the largest volcanic blast in the last two million years, scattering ash thousands of miles, and leaving behind a 60-mile-wide crater that has since filled with water. It unleashed enough ejecta to bury the entire United States in a one-foot-thick layer of ash and rock. Around 73,880 years ago, plus or minus 320 years, the Toba supervolcano roared to life. No one alive today has witnessed a volcanic eruption remotely as explosive as the Toba super eruption. But our ancestors witnessed this eruption, when northern Sumatra exploded, creating a caldera now filled by the largest volcanic lake on Earth, measuring 60 miles by 20 miles and one-third mile deep. The super eruption blasted out an estimated 5,000 cubic kilometers of magma. To put 5,000 cubic kilometers of magma in perspective, this is more than a hundred times as large as the 1883 eruption of Krakatoa, also in Indonesia. The eruption created one of the most dramatic natural disasters in human history. The plume of the eruption punched 20 miles or more into the sky. This megacolossal eruption was the third, and largest, in the last million years at the Toba caldera. More than 7 trillion tons of volcanic material were ejected, much of which was spewed as ash across the region, covering several million square miles of the planet's surface in a layer of ash. There's been a lot of controversy about how the Toba supervolcano eruption, that was about 5,000 times larger than the eruption of Mount St. Helens, affected Earth. Some scientists think that the eruption that spewed large amounts of ash into the atmosphere, caused winter-like conditions for 6 to 10 years and a cooler climate for about 1,000 years. The event dwarfs any other historical eruption, the largest of which was Tambora, also in Indonesia, in 1815. Despite being 100 times smaller in magnitude than Toba, Tambora led to a global drop in temperature and disastrous crop failures across the Northern Hemisphere the following year. This same climate disaster may have also happened after the Toba eruption, the effects in the Northern Hemisphere were probably much more severe than in the region closer to the equator, where the eruption took place. Some scientists argue the eruption plunged Earth into a six-year volcanic winter, followed by a thousand-year cooling of the planet's surface. The fall in temperature, due to the eruption alone, would have lasted no more than a few decades, but it may have accelerated or amplified a climatic cooling event already underway, providing positive feedback at a critical moment. These ideas are controversial and strongly disputed, however. The flora and fauna living in the vicinity of Toba would have been decimated over the 14-day duration of the eruption. Southeast Asia was then occupied by possibly four or five known species of human, including Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, Homo floresiensis, Homo luzonensis, and the Denisovans. Scientists have argued that the super-eruption caused a global cold spell, and darkened the sky with ash and soot, which caused a prolonged period of deforestation in Southeast Asia. If that's the case, though, the eruption and its aftermath didn't stop early humans from surviving in India, 
2,000 miles away from the Toba eruption. Archaeologists found evidence that humans in India survived the Toba eruption and continued to flourish after it. They studied a unique archaeological record that covers 80,000 years at a site in northern India, where ash from the Toba eruption was found. At a site in southern India, archaeologists also found similar stone tools above and below a thick layer of Toba ash. The archaeologists believe the artifacts match similar tools previously found at sites in Africa, Australia, and the Arabian Peninsula, that date to about 285,000 to 50,000 years ago. Given the similarity between these tool technologies, the site offers yet more evidence of Homo sapiens moving out of Africa earlier than previously believed. These toolkits were present before and after the Toba super eruption, indicating that populations survived the event. It is likely that humans made the same kinds of tools all along the route from Africa through India, reaching Australia by at least 65,000 years ago. India therefore provides a crucial cultural link between Africa, Asia, and Australia. The fact that these toolkits did not disappear at the time of the Toba super eruption, or change dramatically soon after, indicates that human populations survived the so-called catastrophe and continued to create tools to utilize their environments. The findings fit with other archaeological evidence from Africa, Asia, and elsewhere to support the idea that the Toba super eruption had minimal effects on modern humans, and did not cause a population bottleneck, as postulated. Indeed, archaeological sites in southern Africa show human populations actually thrived, following the Toba super eruption. Climate and vegetation records from Lake Malawi in East Africa also show no evidence for a volcanic winter at the time of the eruption. Apparently, some proponents of the Toba catastrophe theory failed to account for the fact that the region around the equator, where modern humans lived at the time, is much warmer than London or Chicago, and therefore was not affected by the so-called volcanic winter. Scientists dated the Toba super eruption to 73,880 years ago, with an uncertainty of just 640 years and a 95% confidence level. In scientific terms that's 73.88 thousand years ago, plus or minus 0.32 thousand years. They worked out the age of the explosion by dating crystals of a specific mineral using a mass spectrometer. Geochronologists measured the tiny amounts of argon gas built up inside the crystals, since they were thrust out of the Toba volcano and deposited. This method produces a very exact date. From temperature records extracted from the ice caps at both poles, and from calcite formations in caves across Europe and Asia, we know that one of the longest periods of cold climate in the last 130,000 years began when Toba erupted, and temperatures fell abruptly by several degrees. Much remains to be understood about the aftermath of this exceptional geological event, but at least we now know when it happened, to within a few centuries, and can use ash and chemical remnants to tie together diverse records of global climate, ecology and human evolution. The dating of teeth from a remote cave in western Sumatra Indonesia, less than 300 miles from the Toba volcano, suggests that modern humans were present in tropical Southeast Asia much earlier than previously thought. Using new investigative technology, researchers have been able to show that the teeth are definitely modern human, and they date from around the time of the Toba eruption. This cave has been shrouded in mystery since it was first excavated in the 1880s, so scientists combine date ranges from multiple tests to estimate that the fossil teeth were deposited between 73,000 and 63,000 years ago. In Malaysia, 150 miles due east of Mount Toba, volcanic ash also buried stone tools, that archaeologists think were made by modern Homo sapiens, which proves that our ancestors were living in Southeast Asia before it erupted. Around 75,000 years ago the sea level was about 200 feet lower than today, and the islands of Sumatra, Java, and Borneo were connected to the Malay Peninsula. These dates indicate modern humans were living in Sumatra and Java, in a closed canopy rainforest environment at the time of the eruption. This also means that these people could have been victims of the eruption. There is even evidence that other humans, including Homo floresiensis and possibly even Homo erectus, still lived in the region at that time. This early dating complicates the current scientific consensus of when modern humans spread from Africa to populate the rest of the world. 
This add to a growing picture that Homo sapiens was spreading through Asia towards Australia before the date of around 60,000 years ago, previously assigned to the main out of Africa dispersal. The current idea, among those who pay attention, is that modern humans first arose in Africa about 300,000 years ago. They then spread out from Africa around 100,000 years ago in multiple waves to populate the rest of the world. However, scientists are building up a range of evidence suggesting that modern humans may have dispersed even earlier than this. Either the genetic calibration suggesting a later out-of-Africa event are wrong, or there must have much been earlier migrations of modern humans spreading far from our African homeland. The Toba eruption also illuminates how adaptable modern humans were to living in new environments, very different from their African homeland. Between 73,000 and 63,000 years ago, during a warm period, Sumatra had a similar rainforest ecosystem as it has today. Living in a rainforest was not thought to be possible until only the last few thousand years. This is because sourcing enough carbohydrates and proteins in dense canopy forests requires sophisticated hunting technology and knowledge that the first humans out of Africa would not have possessed. But humans are making use of such challenging environments as soon as they arrived in Sumatra. Small bands of hunter-gatherers turned out to be highly adaptable in the face of environmental change. More archaic humans such as Neanderthals and Denisovans may not have been so lucky. But Homo floresiensis, the hobbit of Flores Island, 1700 miles to the southeast of Toba, seems to have survived the eruption and lived another 10 to 15,000 years. In fact, this event may have allowed Homo sapiens to move into regions that had been controlled by these other human groups, who were not as adaptable as us. While the Toba super eruption was certainly a colossal event, this natural disaster may only have had a minor impact on modern human populations at the time, according to the most recent evidence. But evidence does point to genetic bottlenecks in some animals in the wake of the Toba eruption. For example, the populations of Eastern African chimpanzee, Borneo orangutan, Indian macaque, cheetah, and tiger, all recovered from very small populations around the time of the eruption. The separation of the nuclear gene pools of lowland gorillas have also been estimated to have occurred close to the Toba eruption.